Review, where we talk to you about the big things that have taken place in the month and also tie it into Bible prophecy. My name is Jeremy. My name is Richard. And my name is Jared. So friends, before we even begin, let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, to present your word. I pray, dear God, that as we speak, that they'll not hear man or woman, but they would hear the voice of Jesus Christ saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Open our eyes, enlighten us, we pray, is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, friends, so as we turn our attention to the screen, as we open up this month in review with mm -hmm. our opening scripture taken from Matthew 24, and this account is when the disciples came to Jesus and were asking him, Master, what shall be the sign of thy coming, mm -hmm. and what shall be the sign of the end of the days, the end of the world? And verse 7, Christ answers this question to the disciples very directly, friends. He says, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, mm. this is speaking of primarily calamities and natural disasters. So yes. have we seen those things in the month of September? Indeed, yes, we, we have. have. All we right. have been seeing them. Actually, to be more specific, we've seen Hurricane Florence, mm -hmm. and it's been ripping through the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. Here we have on CBS News, it says, Florence gone, but it's flooding, a crisis in parts of North Carolina. Now, when we're seeing everything that's been taking place, we see that there's been massive floods that mm -hmm. have been happening in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I remember in specific is there was a hog farm in which they were harvesting the manure and the, um, the urine of the hogs mm -hmm. in order to spray on the crops nearby. However, that specific farm was flooded. Mm -hmm. So imagine with all of the filth of the swine's, um, swine's fecal matter as well as the urine being mixed into that flood water, now people mm. will be getting sick because of that. And that actually brings to mind a scripture. What's that scripture that we were talking about earlier? We were discussing Luke 21 and verse number 25, which says this. It says, and there should be signs in the sun mm -hmm. and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. What happened right here? Hurricane in the sea causing flooding. That's right, friends. And while you know, Hurricane Florence was passing through the Carolinas. Mm. In the Philippines, at the same time, Hurricane, uh, rather, yes, Hurricane Florence was, you know, passing through. A typhoon was massacring the Philippines. Yes. Mm -hmm. the Asian countries there. Look at the screen. This is from USA Today. It says, Typhoon Mangoot kills at least 69, dozens buried in landslide in Philippines, mm. presumed dead. So we see a fulfillment here of Matthew 24, as well as Luke 21. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? But again, friends, as we're going on, Sister White tells us mm -hmm. that these things will occur in these last days. Look at the screen. This is from Great Controversy, page 589, 590, and she says that Satan is working in the laboratory of nature. Oh, yes. Bringing these calamities, these natural disasters upon the earth, right? And the Lord is allowing this to happen providentially that his people will be awakened. Mm, yeah. And I don't want to read all of it, but we see there, we see calamities by sea and by land. We see the tempests, the storms, the waves. Satan is exercising his power. And if you go down to the last green words at the bottom, it says, these visitations, the calamities, natural disasters, they will become more and more frequent. And what else? Disastrous. Disastrous friends. We see people dying left, right, and center mm. from these calamities. It's happening. It is happening. And let's take a uh, switch of gears right now from the calamities that are happening in the tempestuous sea and come to now the controversy, mm -hmm. even the protests that um, many people are involved and were involved in concerning the Nike ad featuring yeah. Colin Kaepernick. I'm yes. sure you, go, you all remember this. Yes. It says here, CNN Money, Nike's Colin Kaepernick gam gamble is already paying off. So yeah. we know what happened here. Colin Kaepernick, he was a former NFL quarterback, and he began to kneel during the national anthem, mm -hmm. um, you know, to cause awareness for social injustice. Right. And so because of this, he doesn't even have a job now in the NFL, but Nike put him in their ad. And because of that, since that, they have gained $6 billion in funds. And But people have been protesting their gear, protesting um, their different products. Mm. But while people are protesting this, what, what, what event are their minds, have they forgotten? Are their minds geared away from? Mm, the turret even, Let's right. look at the screen. It is from the Catholic priest sex abuse scandal, which sure. we talked about last month. That's right, yeah. It says here, New York Times, Catholic priests abuse a thousand children in Pennsylvania, the report says. So it's almost as though it's a smoke screen. Mm. 
we are protesting one issue but forgetting the true protest. Right, and it's interesting because as we see Nike, the ad, Colin Kaepernick, how does this has caused controversy, friends. Mm -hmm. We want to shift gears just a few, no, you know, it's just a little detour to show another controversy happening in the media realm. Mm -hmm. Look at the screen here. This is from the former writer of Sesame Street's Bert and Ernie. Yes. We all grew up with Bert and Ernie. I did, you know, Sesame Street. Yep. Sesame Street. And the writer has come out and said that Bert and Ernie are, you know, as it were, a loving couple. Look at the screen. Yeah, NPR. Couple. It says former writer saw Bert and Ernie as a loving couple or a same-sex couple. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Sesame Workshop Workshop now disagrees. So Sesame Street is saying, listen, we don't agree with the writer. Mm -hmm. Right? Go to the next screen. This is from a tweet from um, Sesame, Sesame Street or Sesame Workshop, and these are a couple of tweets. They're essentially saying, listen, we are not, you know, we do support um, inclusion and acceptance, mm -hmm. you know. However, Bert and Ernie, they are not a same-sex couple. They're not in a relationship together. However, mm -hmm. the writer is saying, you know, this is based on my lifestyle, which is he's married to another uh, male. You know, he's living in a homosexual lifestyle. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, who do we believe? Where do we stand on this point, mm -hmm. right? We see this controversy here between the LGBT community and those, even Sesame Street, who don't believe that this particular instance is related to that. Right, mm -hmm. but the point here is, Sesame Street, as you mentioned, you know, and we have agreed, we grew up watching Sesame Street. And how many other kids have been affected, mm -hmm. knowingly or unknowingly, by this? That right. is true. Yeah. And the thing is, we can see how the LGBT community is working. We mm. see how the writer of um, this specific portion with Bert and Ernie for Sesame Street has been pushing his agenda, maybe unknowingly to mm -hmm. people, but now it's being brought to light because the LGBT movement mm -hmm. is becoming so widespread. But not only that, we see that they're targeting the children. The LGBT community is really trying to shape and form the minds of the growing society as it were. Mm -hmm. So here we can see on ChristianHeadlines.com, it says this. It says, trans puppet videos teach kids mm -hmm. millions and millions of children are transgender. Mm -hmm. Now this is a very sad, heartbreaking video for me to watch because we see that the LGBT community is pushing this um, agenda on the hearts and minds of children. So take a look. Hello, my name is Julian. When I was little, people called me Julia and thought I was a little girl. But in my heart, I felt like I was a little boy. <laughs> if you want to get to know my world, friends, and wonderful stories, click on this link. <laughs> And that is just so sad. He says, my name is Julian. At first, people used to call me Julia because they thought I was a girl. But in my heart, I felt and thought as if I were a boy. Um. Now, that's the sad thing. Our feelings, our hearts, our own minds, they're deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's true. So as a child, to be saying, I thought I was a boy this entire time, that is so sad because mm -hmm. the one thing that children as of now can think of being solid as a solid foundation is the person that you were born as you were born as a female you're born as a male that's one thing that's solid mm -hmm. but in society as can of I today change? it's fluid and you can change and you can be whoever you want to be however you want to be you could be a cat one day a dog the next day a man and a female mm -hmm. all whenever you want and it's so confusing and this is a show that is geared towards children mm -hmm. but the saddest part about it, all of this is is that according to the bible those who stand up and oppose the LGBT lifestyle, according to the Bible and history and Bible prophecy, they will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. And take a look at Lot and his experience. Down there in Sodom, you had the young and the old affected by this lifestyle, yeah. and they came knocking at his door. Yeah. Look at this article. It says, Christian mom is suspended from Facebook for labeling transgenderism a mental illness. So just a brief recap. This lady is mostly uh, known by or more commonly known as activist 
mommy. Mm -hmm. And she made some comments against transgenderism, mm -hmm. and she was suspended from Facebook. Look at the red words. This is what she posted on her uh, timeline. It says, parents of trans teens sue Ohio judge for refusing to approve gender-confused name changes. Then she comments on what she posted. She says, this is what bullying looks like in 2018. Normalize our mental illness, or we will sue you. Small minds, we must use these tactics. Pathetic. She then added the hashtag, hashtag gender insanity. And after posting this, she was suspended from Facebook for about seven days. We are not defending her, but what we are saying is she is against the transgender LGBT lifestyle. Mm. And according to the Bible, we are opposed to that because it is sin, right, but not right. to the individuals because mm -hmm. Christ wants to save them. But notice now, Jared, notice her comments were based on her own biblical or even Christian mm -hmm. you know, beliefs. Right. Yet now she's being suppressed. Those freedom of, uh, her freedom of speech mm -hmm. now is being suppressed right. based on what she believes. And that and knows she's, you know, she says that she's a Christian. Mm. So again, what does that spell for us, friends? What is that saying for those who stand for God's Bible-believing, you know, Bible-believing Christians standing for God's Bible principles in these last days? It's coming. It's right? coming. The thing is, as we see the persecution taking place here in America with people in the censuring of what they want to say and mm -hmm. their freedom of speeches, right. we see people in Egypt are also being persecuted for their standing as Christians. There it is. Look at the Here we have on ChristianHeadlines.com, it says, Christians in Egypt jailed for worshiping an unlicensed house. Mm -hmm. So long story short, in Egypt, many of the churches have to, um, have to be licensed by the state. Mm -hmm. And because this church family had to worship at home, they were jailed. Wow. And as a matter of fact, they also, further on, after they were passing the time, in jail they actually wanted to add more time 15 mm. extra days mm. onto those people because they were worshiping in their own home without a license wow. Wow. when in the, when did it ever have to take place for people to be licensed to worship god wow it's and it. the crazy thing is we see this persecution is happening in egypt persecution happened in egypt many years before e as well in the times of moses when he was trying to free the people so we see this these things are just being repeated Amen. history repeats itself we have to be getting ready for christ's second coming all right friends yes let's go on to the next article this is from newsweek now again on the same lines of religious persecution mm -hmm. it says here this is china now in china is china cracking down on christianity the question is asked officials are burning bibles and destroying crucifixes as religious freedoms sink. What is this, what is, what is this saying for, for God's people in these last days? Go into the article here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to read all of it, but again, mm -hmm. they're just saying here, look in the middle, middle portion of that paragraph, it says, they shut down one of Beijing's largest unofficial, what's that next word? Protestant, Protestant churches. Protestant yes. churches after declaring that gatherings at the Zion church were illegal. Mm -hmm. So we need um, acceptance. We need permission from the state to hold worship mm -hmm. um, in our own homes, wow. in our own churches. Oh, friends, we're living in the last days. Mm. God is trying to wake his people up. Yes. Right? Yes, he He's is. trying to wake his people up. And again, friends, as you know, we see, to make matters worse, as we come back to America, come back to the West, you know, we see Trump again in the news, as always. Always. Mm -hmm. Right? He always is in the news saying some, some sort of um, foul statements. However, he has been speaking without knowing or knowingly um, prophetic language. We've seen that time and time again, even, mm -hmm. you know, in the months before. Um, speaking words that is hindering even the work of Protestantism. Yes. Look at the screen here from the Washington Post. It says, Trump suggests that protesting should be illegal. But didn't, mm. we, we, didn't we just hear the word Protestant in the last article? Mm -hmm. What yes. is a Protestant? Protest. Protesting. It's the root right? word. That's the root word. It says mm. here, um, Trump, on Tuesday, he took his attacks on free speech one step further, suggesting in an interview with a conservative news site that the act of protesting should be illegal. Mm. So what about those who protest against the sins of the Roman Catholic Church, mm. as Protestants should do? Those who sigh and cry against all the abominations, abominations in right? the church and in the and world. in the world, friends. Mm. They're going to be censored according to Bible prophecy. Not only that, but let's look here at the screen at this article from The Independent. Next global financial crisis will strike in 2020, warns investment bank. Mm. Notice this from Bloomberg. It says warnings keep coming about a downturn that hit, that will hit 
in 2020. Do they know something we don't? Mercy. Is the world <laughs> telling us a financial and economic crisis is coming? Mm. Mm. D but don't we know that already from Bible yeah. prophecy? That's right. Are, are we, we aware? Are we, are we awake? Are we, are we awake, staying right? awake? And the sad thing is, many people may be stating, oh, I'm not claiming that Jesus isn't coming, but we could be evil servants, yes. not only by the words that we may speak, but our actions. Actions, actions actually speak louder than the words that you speak. Mm. So if you're just lollygagging and playing around with salvation and even with the investigative judgment that is taking place as mm. of now and not being serious about it, you're being an evil servant. So we have to be praying to God to take that yes. lax, that lackadaisical spirit away from us so we can be focused on being ready when he does come. Yes, friends, time is running out. And as time is running out, we must make sure that we get the gospel out before it is too late. And speaking about the gospel, we want to highlight this individual. This is Ellen Lefevre. I hope I pronounced her name right. Ellen Lefevre's testimony. And we have been announcing on our previous uh, month in reviews that we want to hear your testimonies. Mm -hmm. Ellen Lefevre has shared with us her testimony on evangelism. This is what she says. She is from Vero Beach, Florida. And in Vero Beach, Florida, it was being inundated with cute, worldly messages on painted rocks that were being hidden all around town. And people were excited about finding them or sad if they hadn't. So then God let out with his rock. They took rocks and they began to do evangelism. Mm. Notice what it says. It says, each rock that we made contains a scriptural treasure. Hunt on the back, which if followed, will lead anyone open to the leading of the Holy Spirit into the Sabbath truth and showing God that we love him by keeping all the commandments. Mm. The back of each rock contains, or as much as can fit, these scriptures. Look at those scriptures there, brethren. And the last sentence says, may God bless you and the Holy Spirit guide you into present truth. Now take a look again at the picture. You see the rock right there on the left and on the right? It's painted and has the scriptures there. Mm. They took this rock, painted it, put scriptures on it, and hid it around the city mm. so that when people find it now, they're not just getting some play-play thing that the world was using for right. amusement. They're getting, they're getting the gospel. 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 And, and I just want to encourage you all, be creative with getting the gospel out. Amen? Right. Amen. And Praise so God. with that being said, if you would like um, to be featured on an upcoming month in review, go ahead and share your testimony of how you have been spreading the gospel to awaken people to the signs Amen. of the times. That's right. and, and don't do it just to be on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it because Christ is coming soon and we want to share it with others. So go ahead and comment in the comment box below of this video and email us at TITTW at Save to Serve Ministry. Dot com. Again, the email is right there. And until next time, on Tell It to the World, Month in Review.